I've been working in the US dairy industry for over 30 years. Um, and as I look back, I've been working on just uh, sustainability um, since day one. It just wasn't positioned that way. Um, did a lot of work with uh, uh, the industry and in ways to improve cow comfort and well-being and uh, innovative ways to handle and better manage manure and nutrients. And uh, that was really before sustainability was a hot topic, but we all know that this is very important today. Um, so in the last year, um, the uh, Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy released um, some information about the industry's uh, goals and commitment towards environmental sustainability. Uh, the vision is uh, that U.S. Dairy will be an environmental solution. And um, one of the ways I could maybe put some uh, description to that would be um, it's possible that, a, that a, a, a dairy farm could be a net greenhouse gas, net zero or better. So negative greenhouse gas emissions off. If they were to look at all the uh, gases generated in the sinks associated with that and offsets. And so um, we spent a quite a bit of time looking at that and that that is possible. So that's an example of, of, of a dairy being an environmental solution. Um, overall, by 2050, the US dairy collectively commits to um, being carbon neutral or better, which really is reflective of its, of its uh, uh, commitment to um, all greenhouse gases. Um, optimize water use while um, maximizing recycling. And the industry already does a good job with that in many, in many ways. Um, I think about dairy systems, manure systems, milk and centers that I've I've been, uh, been involved with and designed over the years. And uh, you think about a molecule of water that's used um, at the start of, for a CIP cleaning up a milking system is recycled to use for wash down water, which then is recycled for flushing water, which then is used as irrigation water. So there's four uses out of one molecule in some dairies and, and uh, even can be more than that. Um, sometimes the water is used for pre cool milk that's often used. And then it's uh, that, that uh, water is fed to dairy cattle. So there's a lot of that already going on. Um, improve water quality by optimizing um, utilization of manure and nutrients. So uh, manure is a value, you know, contains MPNK and other micronutrients that crops, are, that crops need that are fed to dairy cattle and others. And so we're basically looking at, uh, you know, doing an incrementally better job on that, which is all part of a journey. And a lot of us have been on this journey for a long time. Um, these are, you know, 30 years away. Um, so, um, but that doesn't mean there isn't a lot of work going on um, since the uh, release of this information last year. And in fact, there is. So um, one of the things we'll talk a lot about here more so uh, than the next one I'll show you, but is, is um, the overarching strategy for cradle to farm gate or field to farm, field and farms that sometimes is put and shown on this farm, or in this uh, slide, excuse me. So it's the, uh, the net zero initiative is the, uh, is the program of focus. And it really is put together in response to these, these goals and commitments. So uh, it's collaboration you know, of dairy organizations uh, to develop pathways uh, to make sustainability practices more accessible and affordable to all size farms. Um, so there's research and on-farm pilots and marketing market development for ecosystem credits. Um, NZI really looks to help accelerate um, uh, progress towards these three goals. Um, I should say that these goals are voluntary. They're not, uh, they're not mandated. Um, and we also know that at the farm level, not every farmer is gonna be able to achieve all these goals, but these are collective goals. And the collective goals include over to, I said already, to the processors. So there's, uh, on the processor side, there's, the, uh, there's a work group um, that's been in place for quite a while. And uh, they, they, they're looking at um, these three topics, um, water use, water quality, and, and uh, greenhouse gas emissions um, from their perspective. And uh, they have a program that they're using to put together to measure themselves and report on that. So that's the other part of this is um, it's not just a, a commitment uh, on goals, but there's a commitment to report on progress towards these goals um, every five years starting in 2025. And so um, there's a group of us um, within DMI um, 
uh, that are working on um, how to measure, how to best measure and report on progress towards these goals. Um, our focus has been on the greenhouse gas or the carbon neutral or better um, goal. Um, and we have a, a solid plan on place for that. And it's borrowing from a lot of the published work that's been done by uh, Capper and Katie and others um, in this field in the past and, and advancing it and to strengthen it. And that's, that's our plan. Um, what are use and what are quality? We have some work to do on those and uh, that's, that's, uh, that's in the hopper. But uh, anyway, the commitment is to, to report on dairy's progress towards the 2050 goal starting in 2025. So just to kind of sum up what I said already, um, it's, a, it's a collective effort and it starts at the cradle. So the inputs that go into growing the crops, your commercial fertilizers, um, pesticides, herbicides, basically the, the prints associated with those are included all the way up to the, um, the product leaving the, um, the processing plant, you know, whether it be uh, fluid milk or, or um, what have you. So we measure on the farm, so field and farm, and then we measure at the processor. Um, we have the trucking included between the two, and we have our, our um, collective uh, um, goals covered. And quantify. So I'm going to focus on the NZI part, not the processor part um, for today. The, um, so NZI, um, some people have said, uh, you know, what is it and what is it not? Um, so it's a collective effort of all farms, um, recognizing that every farm will reach net zero status. Um, it's a collective uh, effort across all farms. And uh, it's not mandatory. Again, I said it's voluntary. But uh, really, NZI is about developing the pathway for farms that want to contribute to, to work towards net zero as we work towards the goals. Um, it's not for big farms. It's not for little farms. It's not for medium-sized farms. It's for all farms. Um, and so obviously, practices to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, particularly um, those that know you about, there are some kinds of scale in place with some of the techniques to reduce on-farm greenhouse gas emissions. We know that all farms aren't gonna be able to adopt those, some of those techniques, but they can adopt other techniques. Um, if we think about the uh, dairy farm and how we actually go about quantifying a dairy's uh, cradle of, to farm gate, greenhouse gas emissions, there's four prints, as we like to call it. There's the, the enteric print, which comes from the cattle. So whether it be, uh, you know, it's basically the sum of the dry cows, lactating cows and replacements, and if there's any bulls on the farm. Um, we calculate the uh, greenhouse gas footprint from the enteric. And then, of course, the cattle have to be fed. So there's a, there's a uh, greenhouse gas component with uh, producing that feed. Dairy cows produce manure, and dairy cows also need en energy. So harvesting milk, cooling, things like that. So we look at all four of those prints, and different sized farms have different options um, depending on the, the granular of the prints. But certainly, we know that uh, I've asked myself this question as I've been on this journey myself, um, after these goals have been set, I really haven't thought of any herd management practices that would reduce greenhouse gas footprint that also don't contribute to, generally contribute to profitability. So that's a good thing. Um, that would maybe exclude uh, um, a, a feed additives. We don't know what the feed additives may cost that could reduce the tariffs. And there's a lot of promise in that area. But um, overall, just general great herd management practices, cow comfort well-being, um, do result in uh, less greenhouse gases per unit of milk yield, which is an intensity measurement. Um, so NZI is not one, one size fits all. This considers all farms, and I think I've already pretty much covered that. Um, different places across the country are included. And um, so, um, um, oh yes, it's not immediate. So as I said, it's, these are 2050 goals and beyond, um, but uh, starting here last year and making significant process progress now. So um, there's, uh, there's some core tracks that I wanna share with you. Um, one of them is essentially a, a, research, a research area. So on the left-hand side, we talk about research gaps. Um, one of the things that we, you know, as a working example of this, one of the things that we, we um, really discovered um, uh, the group that looked at can a dairy be net greenhouse gas zero or better um, starting in 19 or 2019-ish um, is that there's, you know, 
when we looked at that, there's, there's certainly gaps in information. Um, and which came out of that is, okay, well, here, here's some inf here's, here's research work, whether it's in the field or in the laboratory that needs to be done to, clo to, to close those gaps. So we have a good handle on what the gaps are and what the work needs to be done. And, um, uh, you know, they, they apply across all four of the prints. So the, the enteric print, the feed print, the Menard print, and the, uh, the energy print. Um, we also have, um, and we have practice projects in place on that. Um, one of them is a large project that's really focused on soil carbon sequestration and um, 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 nitrous oxide into all emissions from field crops. That's an area where we have a gap. And so we have a very large project that's being hit up by Dr. James Wallace, um, collaborating with uh, several institutions across the country uh, uh, to, uh, to get at that information. Um, the other one on here on the upper right-hand side is, uh, is dairy scale for good. So dairy scale for good re means essentially doing work on select farms that uh, are good to work with where information can be, um, so when resources can be put into those farms, um, the impacts documented and demonstrated, and then the lessons learned from that uh, taken out and expanded for all farms to look at to um, consider adopting those practices and methods. So um, there's two farms that are, are being uh, analyzed uh, today. Um, that's being led by Caleb Harper at DMI. And um, there's a lot of work there, a lot of innovation, tech, a lot of innovative technologies being looked at to go on in those uh, farms. Um, one of them is to essentially um, process manure to the point where um, we have a product that's uh, dried dried solids, dried MPK solids, as we call them. Um, and then the balance would be a, um, a, a liquid ammonia project that uh, product, excuse me, that would be used for um, fertilizing crops and evaporating all the, all the excess moisture off. So um, I remember 15 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, even back that far, talking to my uh, colleague, uh, Andrew Wadel at McClanahan and saying, oh boy, farms would just love to make that manure go away. And this project, is getting at, well, let's make the point though the water go away, but let's utilize the nutrients that are valuable to the crops and resulting in far less material to have to store and handle and uh, have a less impact on the environment. So we get lessons learned from the, both of these projects and uh, that, that basically goes to uh, collective impact through adoption. And that's what the lower right-hand side is. So there's general benefits on this. You know, when I talked about the, the prints, um, is, uh, here's the enteric print, um, and our ideas for improvement here are shown. So diet management, we know that diet, feeding high quality forages, um, produces less methane per unit of milk. Uh, we know genetics are a potential there for improvement. We know that keeping cows comfortable um, and healthy and around is a good way of reducing our footprint. Um, and there's the topic of feed additives that are directly targeted at reducing enteric methane emissions. Um, certainly the cows have to feed, so jumping over here to the left, you know, practices that reduce energy required for farming, no-till, low-till applications, cover crops to help sequester carbon um, and maintain uh, improve uh, soil health, um, better management of nutrients and uh, just, just pitches and agriculture is all, are all underneath the, some of the ideas for feed. On the manure side, I talked to you about, um, you know, sort of some basic well, let me back up. Talk to you about advanced treatment, which would include just sort of making this manure go away, except for the valuable nutrients. But more uh, basic than that, you know, just general reducing emissions from long-term manure storages. Long-term manure storages are very important for water quality goals, and they've been around for a long time, especially in areas where there's a lot of rain, like where I live in upstate New York and the Finger Lakes region. Um, I know digesters have a huge opportunity to reduce, uh, reduce the on-farm greenhouse gas print, and we know a lot about that. We know where it needs to go to make that happen. Um, technology is much more advanced than it was 20 years ago in the United States, and so that's a really good thing. Well positioned on that, just a couple of things need to come together. Um, I mentioned the nutrient recovery um, and then renewable fertilizers. Over on the energy side, we're basically doing you know, implementing best manager practice to reduce energy use and then uh, maximize as much as possible on a farm renewable energy production if they have the economies of scale to do that through digesters. Um, some farms may have wind, some farms may look at solar. Um, so those are some of the things. 
But at the bottom here, it's really important, like, like what some of the other speakers said, that the key is measurement, is measurement as far as documenting progress towards our goals. And that's essentially what I, what I came to DMI to start and figure out how to do it. So uh, that and a couple others, so that's our, that's our day in and day out job. Um, so we have these things in place. Obviously, they provide um, benefit back to the farmer in uh, all these, all four areas. So you know, healthier cows, increased milk production, reduce greenhouse gas intensities, healthier soils, um, just all around, there's a, a lot of benefits. So um, they're self-explanatory. One of the key things is this ecosystem markets or ecosystem services. So really, so being from the farm myself, um, really important to me to see the opportunity for the farms to get as much revenue back on any of these ecosystem um, credits that can be developed from this innovative work. So we're really glad to see that on there. Lots of partners in our work. Um, so it's a NZI is a collaborative uh, and comprehensive uh, uh, initiative. So there's partners, um, the national dairy leadership level and their constituents. So Innovation Center, IDFA, DMI, Nutrient, US Dairy Expo Council, and National Milk Producers of Federation, um, corporate and, and uh, funding partners, Nestle and Syngenta and FR and uh, others, NGO partners uh, listed there. And then, of course, the research partners are important for a lot of these projects ARS, Cornell, Davis, Wisconsin, Vermont, Texas AM, and uh, University of Wisconsin, uh, Platteville. So uh, a lot of, lot, of, lot of going on and a lot of money. You can see that there's $31 million of external support just in the last two years that really helped advance the Net Zero Initiative. So at the end of the day, um, you know, this work is really going to pull together and uh, advance the U.S. dairy industry. Um, I can see where it, it helps both in profitability in some ways um, and um, it, it uh, results in um, huge imp impact on the potential to improve impact or reduce impact on the environment, both on greenhouse gases um, and uh, water quality impairment and also reduce resources required per unit of, of milk produced. So uh, really happy with all this. Um, it's very exciting to be involved with, very exciting information, a lot of details. There's a lot of details to this. Um, and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, moving on and, and starting getting some of this out, uh, out more publicly as, as the information is available. So well, with that, I'm gonna stop. Thank you.